Hey you guys, today we're going to be going over the two different versions of the HP Microserver. The first one we have here is the HP Microserver Gen 8, and this is the same exact thing except for it's just the slightly older version of this one. As you can see, just the difference is this front label here, um, but they're pre pretty much the same thing. Same power supply, same motherboard, uh, same CPU depending on what you get. Um, so I would consider it being exactly the same. And then we also have the newer Gen 10 version, which at first, the specs, I kind of liked it because of the a newer uh, AMD CPU instead of Intel. Um, you know, it's bigger memory capacity because you can do up to 64 gigs instead, I mean, I'm sorry, up to 32 gigs instead of the uh, 16 gig um, maximum capacity which these gen 8s have so if you want more than 16 gigs you have to go to this one because this one can support 32 gigs um, so two 16 gig dims instead of two 8 gig dims um, but to the to me I would still get a gen 8 just because it's more customizable you can uh, upgrade the CPU easier you can um, I mean I love the front um, even the front of it is so much nicer than this cheap plastic thing you just pull this off and it just falls off and it's literally the drives are just sitting there with some screws on it and you just pull this down to flip out the drive i mean it's just very to me this one's very cheaply made compared to this nice pull out almost like a synology pull out drive uh here um i just feel like this one is so much more well built compared to this one um, and even with this one, the CPU is soldered on, kind of like how the Macs are nowadays. So you can even upgrade your CPU if you wanted to. With this, you could have a crappy Celeron, an i3 like this one has, or they even, this one even supports the Xeon. So you're going to have like up to eight cores. So to be honest, I would almost go with the older version, which is kind of sad to say. Um, but let's go ahead and turn these things around so we can see the back and see the different components. But as you can see here on the front, you got your two USB ports, just like you do here on the bottom, and then you do have the optional for an optical drive, which nowadays people don't really get that anymore because it's fading out, but you can see that one's up there. Um, but yeah, let's turn these things around, and then we'll go inside and each one and see what the differences are. All right, here's the back of them. So on this particular one, I added a uh, dual gigabit NIC um, because these onboard ones um, actually failed because I had a lightning strike and it fried both my NICs. Um, now I have a battery backup that filters that out now. So now I should be good. But now I have these dual NICs and it's good to have that express slot there. Uh, the one advantage the newer model has is dual slots. So if you wanted to do like maybe a RAID card and then a dual NIC, um, you could do that as well. So that is one advantage uh, of the newer model. And you can definitely tell this one is much heavier and this one's much lighter. So that is another positive with the next gen. Um, but everything else is pretty much the same. As you can see, it's dual NICs, dual NICs, four USB ports, four USB ports. Um, this one does have the VGA and two display ports, which is nice. This just has VGA. So that is also a better option for the newer gen. So let's go ahead and pop these covers off and then let's take a look inside. All right, now that we have the side covers off, you can clearly see they're pretty similar besides the newer gen has the two PCI um, slots, which is nice. And then you get the USB uh, port here. You got a SATA, usually for that DVD drive up top, and then you have your SAS card uh, with your SAS connector, and that goes to the four drives in the front. So like I said, you can always add a RAID card here. Because uh, the onboard RAID controller card can only do, I believe, RAID 1, 1 and 0, and then 0. So you only have those crappy options. So if you want RAID 5, RAID 10, anything else, you're going to need to uh, definitely do a RAID card here. And it's the same thing here. Uh, now, that you only have one PCI slot here, um, the same SAS connector. So if you wanted, like I said, more RAID options, you're going to have to put a RAID card in here, which I have done in these and it makes it so much faster, especially if you're going to do uh, VMware ESXi. You can just load that out in here. And this thing could actually, if you do the Xeon uh, Intel processor on the Gen 8, you can actually run a couple of VMs off it and it wouldn't be so totally horrendous, um, but it'll still perform pretty well, which is only like three or four VMs. 
Um, now, so you can see in here, there's the heat sink and below that is the integrated CPU and that's integrated onto the motherboard. So if you wanted to get a different CPU, you'd have to switch out this whole motherboard. Now on the Gen 8, you can remove that heat sink and there's, you can flip that CPU out and put in a bigger, beefier CPU or crappier CPU, I mean, or whatever you want. And it's got the, basically the same power supplies. I think it's 190 watt max in both units, and there are. So let's go ahead and flip it around the other side. And again, you can see pretty similar things. There's the heat sink here on that side for the CPU. You have two DIMM slots, and I believe this is 8 gig per DIMM max, while the Gen 10, the newer one, is 16 uh, gigs per DIMM, so you can do, obviously, 32 gigs. Um, so that's definitely your options with those two gens. Um, that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, it really depends on what you need. So if you need something that's got 32 gigs, you have to go with the Gen 10. If you can handle 16 gigs, the Gen A, I think, will be your best bet because it's upgraded ability on the CPU is huge. Because um, usually these come with lower and CPUs like an i3 even I've seen these come with Celerons and it just like kills me it's like god that's so that's so terrible because running anything on it is gonna just yeah you're not gonna be good obviously so um like I said I love this one a lot better um but like I said if you need those two PCI Express slots um then you're gonna need to go with the Gen 10 um, so that's it you guys. I hope this video was uh, helpful to someone out there. I know it was when I was looking into these. I couldn't really find a good video comparing uh, what you get with the Gen 10 or 8. Um, so I figured I'd make a video on it. Please leave a comment in the video if you want to see uh, something else for me to review. Uh, I'd be happy to do it. See you guys in the next video. Thanks.